Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today is going to be an exciting video because we will try to find out the best portrait editing software out there. If you've seen my previous videos, I've talked about different portrait editing software that you can use to help you with your face retouching workflow. We will be pitting them against each other and determine which one produces the best result. So if you want to find out who's on top, just keep on watching. Alright, so before we start, could you please hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and click on the bell icon to turn on notifications. So today we'll be using the following software. Luminar 4, Portrait Pro 19, Photo Diva, Beautify Panel 2, and Photoshop. We'll first be using the automatic retouching process and just let the software's artificial intelligence do the editing for us. Let's go ahead and start with Luminar 4. We open the Portrait Luminar Looks collection over here. Then we click on the AI Face Enhancer preset. And that's it! It was literally a one-click edit. Let's check out the before and after. Before. After. Before. After. Let's zoom in. So it appears to have smoothened the skin and also slimmed down the face. Let's just save this so we can compare it with the other software later. You can pause the video to copy the export settings here. Okay, now let's try Portrait Pro 19. At this point, the AI is detecting the face and applying its own changes to the image. And within a few seconds, it has finished processing. Let's see the before and after. Before. After. Before. After. Let's zoom in. Did you notice the difference? There's a slight color shift, but it did an amazing job with the skin smoothing. And it also slimmed down the face. Let's export this for our comparison later. The next software is Photo Diva. Let's go over to the Retouch panel and select the Overall Enhancement preset. So this is the before, after. It's a very subtle change, hardly noticeable. Let's zoom in so we can see it better. Before, after. Before, after. And let's save this. And now we'll be using the Photoshop extension panel called Beautify Panel 2. And let's use the frequency separation. I'll increase the radius until the skin colors bend well. And decrease the threshold until we see the details in the eyes. And now we start painting on the entire face using the white brush. I don't need to be precise here because it will only target and process the skin and exclude the other parts of the face. And to check if we've covered everything, select the mask, hold the Alt key, and click on the mask. I missed a few spots right here, so let's paint it with white. Then to go back, just hold Alt again and click on the mask. And this is the before and after. Let's zoom in. Before. After. Before. After. Obviously, editing this image took longer because you had to manually brush on the face. Unlike the previous software that uses artificial intelligence to scan and detect the face and automatically apply a preset. Let's also export this. And lastly, I will run this frequency separation Photoshop action that I manually created on my previous video. Click the title card on the top right 
or in the description below if you want to see how I did it. And from there, you can download the Photoshop action for free. So we go to the Actions panel right here, select the Skin Softening action, and press the Play button. Again, I'll adjust for the skin tones, as well as the skin texture. And slightly nudge the blacks and whites on the underlying layer. We select the brush tool, make sure that the color is white, and we start painting on the face. Let's check the mask and see if we missed a few spots. And this is the before, after. What do you think? Comment down below. Let's zoom in. This is the before. This is after. Let's export this. And here are the edited photos. Have a look and compare them well. This is Luminar 4. This is Portrait Pro 19. This is Photo Diva. This is Beautify Panel 2. This is my Photoshop action. And here it is side by side. And let's zoom in. So what do you think? Which one did an amazing job? Let me know down in the comment section. And before we continue, please hit the thumbs up icon below if you find value in this video. It really helped my channel a lot. Okay, so now we will use the same software, but this time, we will be editing them properly with my personal workflow. Note that this is my own process, and this may vary from person to person, so you don't have to necessarily agree or follow the same steps that I will be doing. So let's start with Luminar 4. I've opened the image, and as you can see, no changes have been applied yet. So what I usually start with is removing all the dark spots and distracting blemishes. So we go here to the canvas section and use the erase tool. I'll start selecting all the blemishes that I want to remove. Then we click erase to start the process. This is the before, after. Now we go to the portrait section and under AI Skin Enhancer, we move the amount slider until we're happy with the smoothing effect. Let's turn off and turn on the effect to see the difference. Let me just increase the amount a little bit. Okay, looking good. Let's move the shine removal slider and see what it does. Alright. Now let's go to the AI Portrait Enhancer. Let's skip the face light and red eye removal because we don't need that for this image. Then we increase the values for eye whitening and eye enhancer to give life to the image. Let me toggle it on and off. It's a huge improvement, right? Let's enhance her eyebrows a little bit. Then add more vibrancy to her lips by adjusting these sliders. Okay, I think we're done. This is without AI Portrait Enhancer, with AI Portrait Enhancer. Now let me show you the overall changes. Before, after. That looks amazing. Now I want to change the white balance by going to the Essentials panel right here. Select the eyedropper tool, then select the white area of the eye. Now the image has shifted from a warm tone to a cooler tone, which in my opinion looks better. Okay, so we're done editing this image, so let's export it. We now move on to Portrait Pro 19. Let's turn off all the changes that the AI has done to this image and start from scratch. Let's switch to the before and after view, and before I start editing, I want to make sure that the parts of the face are precisely selected. So we click and drag the points right here, 
and adjust accordingly. Okay, now we're ready to start editing. I'll skip the face sculpt effect because I don't want to warp her face. So we'll proceed with the skin smoothing. Click the View Edit Skin Mask, select Cut Back, and paint on the areas that we don't want to apply skin smoothing. Now we start moving the Master Fade Slider to apply skin smoothing. Let me just go all the way to 100 and see what it does. And this is the before and after. Let's zoom in. Obviously, it's way too much, so let's decrease the effect. Around 35 seems to be enough. Now we click on the touch-up brush here on top and start removing the blemishes. Just brush over the spot that you want to remove. Okay, that looks good. Now let's play around with the lighting and see if we get any improvements. As you can see, we can play around with the position of the light source and adjust the position of the shadow to anywhere we want. Okay, so right in the middle looks nice, so we'll keep it there. And let's keep the makeup section for now. We now go to the eye section and move the master fade slider. Let's go all the way to 100 and see the effect. Okay, that's not looking good, so let's dial it down some more. Okay, I think this looks better. And for the final touch, why don't we add some color to her lips? So this is the overall look. Before. After. Let's zoom in. And here is a side-by-side -side look. Let's save this and I'll show you the comparison later. We're down to the third software now which is Photo Diva. Let's click on Auto Retouch and then go to Custom Settings. And we adjust the sliders to our liking. Okay, that looks good. Let's move on to the eye section and add sharpness. Then let's add sharpness and contrast to the eyebrows. Then we also enhance the lips by moving these sliders. Let's go to the common panel and adjust the temperature of the image. Okay, that looks good. Before. After. Let me just add a hint of magenta tint to fix the skin tones. Okay, we're done. Actually, we're not. We forgot to remove the dark spots and blemishes. So we go back to the retouch panel, select the healing brush, and start removing them. Okay, so we're done here. Before. After. Let's save this. Okay, so now we switch to Beautify Panel 2. First, duplicate the layer by pressing Ctrl J. Then click on the Spot Healing Brush tool and start removing the blemishes. Then we click on the Frequency Separation script like we did earlier. Then we set the correct radius and threshold values for the surface blur. and then start brushing on the face. I'll fast forward this process because you've already seen this. And this is the before. This is after. What do you think? Now let's select the frequency separation layer and the layer below it and press Ctrl Shift Alt E to flatten the image and create a new layer above, like so. Then we go to the lighting section right here and click color auto and auto tone. 
Then you select both effects and group them together by clicking Ctrl G. Now this is without color effects. This is with color effects. Now let's group the color effects with frequency separation so we can see the overall changes we've made. And this is without beautify panel effects with beautify panel effects. And last but not least, we'll be using my Photoshop action. We repeat the same steps we've done on Beautify panel. From removing the blemishes, to brushing on the face. The only difference is the kind of effect that they produce. So I'll just switch to time-lapse mode here and enjoy the music for a bit. Alright, so here's the before, after, before, after. Now let's go to Filter, Camera Raw Filter, select the Eyedropper tool, then click on the white part of the eye to change the white balance. Then click OK. And we can now export this. So again, here are the 5 manual edits from each software. And you be the judge which one looks the best. So which one do you pick is the winner? If you ask me, all of them did a great job. But it's still a matter of personal preference. Photo editing, especially when it comes to colors, is highly subjective. And as I keep saying in my videos, there's no right or wrong when editing. We all have our unique styles and abilities. No artificial intelligence can dictate you which looks good or not. So do what you always do. Keep taking great photos, edit them if you have to, and share them for the world to see. It doesn't matter what software or editing process you choose. As long as you're happy with the output, go ahead and stick with it. I hope you find value in this video. And if you do, go ahead and hit that like button. Subscribe if you want to see more photo editing tips and tricks. And click on the bell icon so you won't miss out when I post a new video. And thanks for staying until the end. You're awesome. Thank you for watching.